we started the, our home and school, our local one, up from the ground. Like it, we just started a couple of years ago for us at our school. So it was um, just another girl who worked in our school, like a co-worker that works with us, who brought up the idea that she thought it would be a great idea. So we asked a few parents that we knew would like to do that type of thing, and we come together and we created that group. It's my experience that if you allow yourself to become more involved with not just your local school, but your, your region or, or the provincial level, that you find you are the one who becomes educated and you become more involved and you go back to your local school and share the concerns that are, that are there. Uh, it's not just what goes on in your little school. I've met a lot of people and learned a lot about the school um, system and how the government uh, regulates what funding goes towards schools and the, um, the power that home and school actually does have to raise money for the school and to ha allocate it for the funds and to better your school setting. Okay. Yep. Um. So thank you. My name is Linton Garner, and I forgot to introduce myself earlier today. Uh, I am the president of the Quebec Federation of Home and School. We want to welcome you to this celebration of both the 100th anniversary of the first meeting of the Home and School Association here on this campus, as well as the 75th anniversary of the Quebec Federation of Home and School. So welcome. Much appreciated. Um, as part of the program tonight, we have invited some special guests to reflect on home and school and what it has meant uh, in their own personal experience, what impressed them most, or what they felt exemplified what home and school is all about. So I will introduce to you our first guest speaker, Mr. Rod McLeod. Uh, let me begin by wishing the uh, QFHSA uh, a very happy 75th birthday. Um, and I would like to take you back in time um, almost to the beginning of, of that period. Uh, over the next uh, <clears throat> five or so minutes, um, I am going to address one of the first major issues that the QFHSA tackled. Uh, one that I think really set the tone uh, for its social activist role uh, that it has excelled at ever since. So the QFHSA, over the course of what became known as the Ultramar School question, um, grappled with this issue of ethnic and cultural diversity. And they learned not to be afraid of authority. So the QFHSA championed what would come to be called multiculturalism in Quebec schools. Uh, in the 1960s, they promoted something called the neutral school movement, which was a reaction to uh, this idea that everything was confessionally divided, Protestant, Catholic, there should be one system, and you know, that has had a whole other history too. Um, and they also advocated um, an overall modernization of, of the Quebec school system. And this effort, which is a whole other story, would have a profound effect um, on the, on the uh, Parent Commission and by extension on the whole uh, quiet revolution. Let me wish the QFHSA the best of luck with the challenges ahead. And I don't mean to be pessimistic, but I will say I suspect that they and we are going to need the luck we can get. Um, happy birthday. Thank you very much. So originally, uh, Leo La France was going to come and give you his remarks, but on Friday morning we got a message from him. There was a family emergency in New Brunswick, and uh, he was going to be there. But he graciously sent me his notes and allowed me to read them to you. So, um, as some of you probably know, uh, Leo La France, throughout his long and distinguished career, uh, showed outstanding leadership and vision, both as an educator and as someone who encouraged parents to be actively involved in their children's education at home, at school, 
and in the community. So in Leo's words, he says, greetings from Moncton, New Brunswick. I apologize for not being present due to a family emergency. Let me begin by stating that I have been very fortunate to have been associated with the QFHSA for over 40 years in the field of education during a number of opportunities in the English sector. I have chosen a few such positive experiences among many to highlight the significant contributions of home and school members over my career. As a new administrator, I remember attending a conference where the speaker, whose name I have forgotten, spoke of the importance of community. He stated that our responsibility is to create a community where we meet the individual differences, to treat every student with respect. As he said, parents send you the children they have. They don't keep the good ones at home. That said, those words rang true to me when I received my first assignment as a school principal. It was an opportunity for me to open a new school and work to form an educational community where staff and parents shared a common goal. It did not take long, given the sense of community, for the home and school parents to say, what do we need? A smart administrator recognizes talent and gets out of their way to let them operate. Our home and school in 1988 just created a spirit of active participation from parents that facilitated an environment where children felt safe and had fun. Let me list but a few of the successes that grew out of this special relationship. A new school receives a grant for library books, the purchase of which cannot be bought at a discount. Home and school, through their belief in literacy and fundraising, were able to more than double the books in the library that we could purchase and at a discount. Our students, for the most part, were second language learners. Parents helped support reading activities in the classroom, the school's annual yearbook, the support for the annual circus put on by our physical education staff. At the time, with the arrival of the need for lunchtime supervision for all students, the hiring of local talent to offer lunchtime activities, support for underprivileged students in attending school field trips. When transitioning to linguistic school boards, home and school continued to make its importance felt in creating special environments that promoted literacy and a sense of community, given the government did not understand the banking and funding of this entity. In closing, I thank all of you that I've had the privilege of working with over my career. Those memories are very special to me. Sorry, it's my mother. <laughs> and and those, those are the words of Mr. Leo LaFrance. Oh boy. Well, yeah, we're a little rock and roll here tonight. So, um, well, we, this will take us to dinner. So, and now dinner will be served, and we will uh, come back to you after that with um, some more special guests and greetings from those um, who wish us well for our 75th anniversary. Thank you. So I'm back here. I'm back here this time without my phone, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that will help, you know. And um, I do have the honor now of uh, being able to ask to the podium Ms. Uh, Kate Lemesh. She is the president of the advisory uh, board on English language uh, education, and and she has roots here in the Holman School, having been a member of the Edgewater Holman School between 1984 and 1981, and having been the one who had started a school newsletter cleverly called Edgewise. She has been a teacher, consultant, and professor at the Department of Integrated Studies and Education at McGill, Ms. Kate Lemaze. Uh, back when uh, giant lizards roamed the earth, I was a, a volunteer mum at Edgewater School. 
I started this, the newsletters so that people could, could get a word in edgewise, as we said. Um, we used to, if the teachers wanted, we'd go into the classes and, and help with the kids. Uh, library, all, all the things that you folks do now, we were doing it. We volunteered as needed, and we had a lot of support from the principal, Mr. George Morgan. He was very welcoming. We heard about Leo earlier on. George was cut from the same cloth as Leo. They were very welcoming, invited us in, let us do things. But, but the memories are still very strong, and they're very strong because of the kind of bonds that we built up among us as a group in, in that school. And I later was, was in BHS as the, uh, in the home and school there, N not as actively. And the memories are really from Edgewater and the things we did and the way we were welcomed there and the way we were invited in. And um, I, I guess I have to say the contribution we made. You know, all these, uh, these examples are of parents who are working to support teachers, to support their children's education, because we valued the education they were getting. And uh, I, I, I don't want to sound precious here, but you know, you do the same thing, and you've been doing it very actively and very well. Um, some people have been doing it for 75 years, apparently. So all I can say is, we, we, did, we felt we were contributing. I know you're contributing, and your children, you know as well as I do, will benefit from that. Happy birthday, congratulations, on to the next 75. Kate. I mean, I think it's a kind of being a developed theme here that you're going to hear and see people who have been involved in this English-speaking community and in education for over 40 years here uh, and even more. And I think it's ind indicative of the English-speaking community and how it has chosen to organize itself and protect itself and look after its future. We have so many great people that have been involved for such a long period of time uh, in the community, and uh, we are going to have another one here as well. Um, her name is Casey Stillwell, and um, she is a true grassroots home and school schooler. Casey has a, was a child member of the Edgewater and McDonald High and High School H&S um, from 1976 through to 1983, while her own mother was active as a parent. So she's really been born into it. She joined Edgewater and McDonald Home and School and, and her own children are now passing through and have passed through uh, the primary and secondary grades with uh, John Rennie High School. Go John Rennie, my, my kids went to. And, um, and for five years, Casey was president of the McDonald Home and School from 2008 to 2014 and a very, and a very long line of outstanding presidents from that Association. So we welcome Ms. Casey Stillwell. So good evening. Um, I was asked to talk about what home and school means to me. Um, I've been involved in the home and school for a long time, um, as was said, and what came to my mind when I was thinking about this was the word opportunity. So when my oldest child entered kindergarten, I was a stay at home mom with two young children at home, plus the one who was going to school. I then had another child, so I ended up with four. Um, and we live outside the community where um, our elementary school is located. So um, joining the home and school gave me the opportunity to meet parents at the school. Otherwise, the parents in my neighborhood, their kids didn't necessarily go to that school. Um, so I was able to get to know parents uh, whose uh, children were friends with my child. Um, and I even made some really good friends in the process. You know, the kind of friends that you keep for your whole life the ones that you can count on in big and small emergencies, uh, come over with a bottle of wine or, you know, help you find uh, your lost child. Um, so it has happened. It has happened. I had four kids, you know, it was harder to keep track. Um, so I had the opportunity to, to um, work on important issues with the home and school. So I was part of the playground committee, as Kate mentioned. Um, I helped renovate. So they put in a great playground and then we came along and said, okay, we're going to renovate it and make it even greater. So we did. We upgraded some of the equipment, um, and we were concerned about the latest safety requirements. So one of the people with me on the playground committee um, jumped off the top of her minivan into a pile of gravel to make sure that the landing would be soft. 
Um, you know, so we wanted to, uh, you know, improve the playground, so we added more stuff. So I learned about safety requirements, I learned about grant writing and making requests, and I learned the best way to plant a tree. That was actually a lot of fun. So I also had the opportunity of organizing and supporting some of our breakfast programs. Now, um, we, know, we all know how important it is to start the day with a good breakfast, but there's lots of high school students who, for lots of different reasons, don't start school, don't start the day with breakfast. Um, so through our efforts at Mac High, we supported the uh, Pearson Breakfast Program, and that provided cafeteria coupons to hungry kids, which was great. Uh, before that, I was part of the Muffin Baking Brigade, say that five times fast, at Edgewater School. And one day, I had a call from Lynn Benjamin, who was the school secretary, to say that one of my kids had appeared in the school office asking um, be, for food because he didn't bring his lunch. So I looked all over the house, I'm like, there's no lunchbox here. He gets off the bus holding his lunchbox, and I'm like, what happened? Oh, I knew you were taking your banana muffins to school, Mom, and I wanted one. <laughs> so, okay, you know, that's my kid. So it was also an opportunity to show my kids, like in an active way, that I was concerned and interested in their day-to-day -day life at school by being involved with the home and school. So one of the biggest opportunities of being a member of the home and school is being able to work together with a group of like-minded people towards a common goal. That doesn't mean we all agree. We have different opinions and most of us are not afraid to express them. Working together in spite of our differences, we work for our children and sometimes we work on projects, we were talking about that earlier at my table, we work on projects that will only benefit those who come after us. This allows us to contribute to the community. Learning to manage a group of diverse volunteers is a bit like herding cats. But the feeling of accomplishment that comes with the successful completion of a project is really worth it. You are doing great things. I wish you continued success in the next 75 years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kimura. Now, I will call on Carol Mindel and uh, Rosemary Murphy to come and say a few words, please. Good evening. Just to give you a quick little history lesson, Carol will continue afterwards. If you ever go to Cape Breton, there's a plaque at the entrance of the Alexander Graham Bell Historic Site in Baytick, Nova Scotia that reads, founded in 1927, the Federation made an enduring contribution to the public education system across Canada. It united local, regional and provincial branches of home and school associations and through its work this large voluntary organization enabled thank you mothers and female teachers to play a okay okay thanks this large voluntary organization enabled mothers and female teachers to play a more active role in the field of education one of those associations was the Parents Association of Baytick, launched by Mrs. Mabel Bell, the wife of Graham Alexander Bell. She had lost her hearing as a child because of uh, scarlet fever. So in her hometown, in her home state of Massachusetts, she then went on and fought for reforms on how deaf children were educated and then integrated into society. When the Bells moved back to Nova Scotia, she worked with the wife of the Lieutenant Governor at the time and other mothers to establish the Parents Association in 1895. In the years that uh, ensued, of course, other provincial federations were established and that led to us in Quebec in 1944, when the Quebec Provincial Council of Home and Schools merged with the Greater Montreal Federation of Home and Schools to form us, the Quebec Federation of Home and School. Should I let you... Actually, we're, we wanted to let you know that the very first meeting of this Parents Association happened right here on the grounds of McDonald College, and that happened in November of 1919, 100 years ago. So basically, it's two milestones for the price of one. So we're 100 years and we're 75 years old, right? So in 1919, Sir Walter Percival, head of the Department of Mathematics at McDonald College here in St. Anne de Bellevue, 
spearheaded the establishment of Quebec's first home and school association at McDonald College School. Soon afterwards, home and school associations started popping up here and there. Over the next decade and a half, at least 12 home and school associations were launched in the province. In the course of researching the uh, history of achievement project, we could not help but notice that some home and school associations spring up here and there, they flourish for a few years, and then as parents graduate out of the school, they fade quietly away. But there are a few exceptions. There are a few associations who have passed the torch of leadership from generation to generation. Tonight we celebrate three of these, well, four of these outstanding home and school associations who have been part of the QFHSA family since the beginning. The McDonald Home and School Association. Formed in 1947 under the leadership of President Reverend Francis Stocksey and the Treasurer W.F. Tilkey, was officially joined the Home and School Federation in 1957. Now, running a home and school association in a high school, as Casey said, is always a challenge, but one that successive generations of the McDonald High School parents have kept going for 72 years. So in 2019, President Stephanie Davidson and Treasurer Lisa Charbonneau have accepted this torch of leadership and have ha that has been handed to them to carry this association on into the future. So we're going to honor them tonight. So I'm going to ask Andrea Capelli and Sheila Desmoreau to come up, sorry, Desormo, to come up and accept a plaque and a special book on behalf of McDonald Home and School. And now Willingdon. Willingdon Home and School Association has been active since 1941, when the Federated Home and School Associations of Westmount, as you remember, I said it was Kings, Westmount High, and Roslyn, expanded to include Iona and Willingdon, became the Greater Montreal Federation of Home and School Associations. And in 1942, Willingdon became part of a federation of 10 associations. Then in 1945, under the leadership of President C.W. Eagle and Treasurer G.F. Shaw, Willingdon Home and School joined the Quebec Federation of Home and School Associations, and their representative, Mr. Gordon Patterson, was elected the first QFHSA president. Gordon Patterson became such a central figure of the early formation of the Federation that in 1973, Doris Richter, QFHSA president from 1969 to 71, created the first Gordon Patterson Award to recognize an outstanding educator who encourages the participation of parents in school life. And Mr. Patterson was the first recipient. Today, Willingdon's co-presidents Sally Burnett and Julie Trudell, along with their treasurer, Genevieve Trudeau, carry the work of their 75-year-old Home and School Association forward. So I ask Sally and Genevieve to come forward to accept a plaque and a memory book. <laughs> and finally, Roslyn Home and School Association. The earliest iteration of this historic association was the Roslyn Avenue Home and School, which was formed in 1935. The Roslyn Home and School Association became a member of the Federated Home and School Associations of Westmount, along with King and Westmount High, in 1941, when that organization expanded to become the Greater Montreal Federation. Roslyn became part of a federation of ten associations, and its president, H. Gilbert, became the first president of the newly merged federation. In 1944. With B.H. Steves as the president and Mr. Lawrence Berkey as the treasurer, the Greater Montreal Home and School Federation in turn merged with the Quebec Provincial Council to form the Quebec Federation of Home and School Associations. Rosalyn then became part of a federation of 45 members. In 1979, the association withdrew from the federation but came back again in 1989. Now, in 2019, 
President Leslie Szymanski and Treasurer Olga Maria Ruiz hold the reins of leadership for this outstanding legacy of community involvement that is Rosalind Home and School Association. So I'll ask Margaret Thompson and Leah Trenier to come forward to accept the plaque and the memory book. We want to say that we are especially pleased to have a small delegation from Grosseville present at this year's banquet and at our fall conference earlier today. As a thank you, we have a special gift for them. I would like to ask Joy, Heather, and Elia to come forward. Well, as probably as, as you all are, are feeling today, um, this is a happy celebration for us, and it's a long history of contribution to the English-speaking community and the education community here in Quebec, and we're extremely very uh, proud of that. But we have a long way to go through the continued participation, continued volunteerism, and the continued identification of the school as a center part of our community. And so we need to continue to be able to do that, need to do that even stronger now, to make that identification clear to the government that our schools are us, our schools are our community, and we intend to stay here. And our community can only can survive when we have the pillars and the foundations of our, of our community like our schools, and particularly like the participation of our parents in the quality of the education that we have been able to deliver over the years in the English education system. So I want to thank you for your volunteerism. I want to thank you for your perseverance. And I want to, I want to encourage you to get more of your, your, your parent body out to invest themselves in your school, not only for today, not only for the kids that you are parenting through the school system right now, but so that our English language school system will survive another 100 years. Thank you very much and thank you for having been with us.